Well, I'm absolutely delighted now to be joined by Dr. Carolyn Rouse. Dr. Rouse, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed for talking to us today. Well, thank you. Now, tell us a little bit about your session here. What, what are some of the main themes you're going to be addressing? Well, in my session, I talk about religious media, African-American religious media. I work on African-American Muslim media. And it's really focused on the question of how have blacks worked to, to not be misrecognized? How have they made themselves legible to whites, but also to themselves through religious media? So, in a sense, how has religious media been used to redeem the faith and the race? Um, so how do we, why, why are we starting from here? So, 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 so what's, the, what's the issue that needs to be addressed in the first place? Well, I think the issue that needs to be addressed is people think that we're post-racial right now. Um, and yet we see uh, an African-American president who is being attacked on all sides by birthers, is he, really, is he really American? Is he really Christian? And all of these questions about who really is he? And Barack Obama trying his best not to associate himself with these sort of stereotypes of what a black man is supposed to be or not. And so I think that it's an interesting question about how, in fact, Barack Obama has had to negotiate and manage within these narrow sort of signifying nar discourses, narratives, in order to make himself, be, it, allow him the freedom to be the kind of president he wants to be. But clearly he's hampered. Talk us through a little bit about uh, the concept of legibility that you were addressing earlier on. Well, so for instance, with racism. Racism is simple. Um, we saw it in the case of George Zimmerman this summer, um, you know, black kid wearing a hoodie uh, in a basically mostly white wealthy neighborhood. He's misrecognized as a thug. Um, he's shot and killed. So misrecognition has been, it's been a an important part of American, African-American struggle. I know in your work that you look at uh, the religious media's uh, uh, role in, in uh, this deciphering, if you, if you will. Tell us a little bit about that. I look at African-American uh, Muslim media. So I start with the Nation of Islam. But before the Nation of Islam, I go back to David Walker's appeal, who in 1829 writes this four-part appeal, in which he claims that we, blacks have a right to defend themselves, you know, which is, is radical. Blacks could have become terrorists. You know, we have, African Americans have worked for hundreds of years to not challenge us, undermine the system, but worked so that they become part of the system. African Americans have used the legal system to fight for their rights, but there were cases of, of slave rebellions and there were cases of, of ter terrorism, um, but they were limited. So Americans have worked very hard in this discursive space of fighting using shame, for instance, by evoking the Bible as a way to get whites to see you know, we are your moral equals. And if you don't treat us right, then you lack the moral, necessarily moral character to, to even call yourself a Christian. Christians didn't really pick up the whole idea of we have a right to self-defense. So it takes a almost a hundred years for David Walker's appeal to be reflected in a new, the you know, movement, a new black religious movement, which is the Nation of Islam, where again Elijah Muhammad argues that we have a right to self-defense. We started off with Barack Obama, you know, we have a, 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 a black president. Do you feel that we're making progress? Do you feel that uh, the media, the religious media, is, is actually helping right now? Um, I think religious media is, is helpful. Um, it's, it's always helpful because at the end of the day, as anthropologists, we know that meaning and value is a social construct. These, these notions of human rights, these notions, these are, you know, these are religiously inflective, inflected values. I think religious media continues to be really important. I think that there's a lot of religious media that, again, limits what people are allowed to do. African-American unemployment is twice that of white unemployment in this country. We're not, you know, we're still struggling just to get the majority of the people into the middle class. 
So I, I think that some of it is kind of detrimental. It's almost like, we, oh, well, everything's okay now, so we can just let go, um, as opposed to saying, what are we missing? What are some new tools that we need to create in order to challenge these kinds of inequalities? And I think that's what Martin Luther King was doing towards the end of his life. Um, he had moved on from it being a race project to being a class and race project. And Malcolm X had done the same thing towards the end of his life. And you know the question is, can we can we bring these two together in an effective way, um, in a way that's also bringing along poor and lower middle class whites as well? You know, this is really important. Well, Dr. Ross, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Fascinating. Thank you very much. Thank you.